This app is breaking the internet. Now goalies have one place in the palm of their hand where they can make their game from average to great. It looks and functions just like Netflix, filled with HD videos. You can learn every skill from the basics to NHL level skill. You can learn ahead, build up your retention. If you're struggling with a skill, you can search. Struggling with a glove save? Have a look. We have the fix for you. In-season programs ensure that you know what to do in practice. You're practicing with a purpose and your game is consistently getting better. Want to save a video for later? No problem. Create your own playlist. Playlist, hey, skills I want to work on tonight. What I want to do this week? What do I need to get better at this month? You can favorite videos. You can find that all in your profile. Everything's custom to you. This is your best guide to become the best goal you can become. Mental performance are what make good goalies into great goalies. We have that covered. Sports nutrition keeps you fueled for practices, games, tournaments. We have recipes, everything you need to be the best version of yourself on the ice. Join now. Enjoy seven days for free. We have 50% off during the holidays. New content every week. This platform will only get better. Don't miss out now. We'll see you on there. Hi everyone, Mark Visentine here. I grew up in a small town called Waterdown, Ontario. That's just outside of Burlington, Hamilton. It's in Canada. And there I played house league for two years before moving up to double A as a full-time goalie. I was fortunate to move up to triple A after that. So I think I would have been 10, probably 10 years old my first year triple A. Played for the Halton Hurricanes. Played one year for the Hamilton Junior Bulldogs, now the Hamilton Steel. And then when I was 16, I was drafted in the third round to the Ontario Hockey League. That's when I packed up, moved out of home, moved in with Billets in St. Catharines, and that's when I began my OHL career. My OHL career had a lot of ups and downs, and it generally got better and better as I got older, which was great. I didn't play a lot my first year, which was hard, but my second year I worked really hard in the offseason, came back, and was able to be drafted first round to the NHL to the Arizona Coyotes. Before turning pro, I played World Juniors. I played on Team Canada twice, earning a silver and bronze medal as well as earning a gold medal with Team Ontario at the World Challenge. I broke a few records in the OHL, one being the most shutouts in a season, with 10, going back to the 1950s, which was great. Once I turned pro at 20, I moved down to the U.S. I started my pro career in the American Hockey League during the lockout season, and I was very fortunate to play my first NHL game uh, at 21 years old in my second season against the San Jose Sharks. I had two really bad ankle injuries after that. I ended up getting both my ankles fused, which is why I stepped away from the game at 25 years old. I tried to make a comeback, but unfortunately my body just couldn't move anymore, which was tough. So here I am now. I'm here to help the next generation of goalies try to have the same opportunity that I had, and if not, still have fun while doing it, and obviously giving them the best chance to develop their skills and honing their craft. So I appreciate you being on here. You being here means that you care about being a good goalie parent, which some of you who may or may not have played hockey can be tough. It can be really hard navigating these waters. It's kind of a unique position. I look at it almost as like it's it's a team sport, but being a goalie is almost like a, an individual solo sport of its own, kind of like tennis or golf. You're kind of in the net on your own sometimes, which can be great or it can be kind of daunting and it can be tough on goalies. It can be very mentally challenging, but it can also give you really great life lessons as an athlete that can kind of transfer into real world outside of hockey. Sorry, we have a cat here. He's very chatty. He's chiming in. So my goal for today is we're going to go over three topics. The first one is how to handle the car ride home after a tough game. The second one is how to make hockey fun. Kind of ties into the same thing as above, but there's some value there. Uh, the next one is going to be how to find a good goalie coach and what to look for in a goalie coach. And then we're just kind of going to see where that takes us today. So to start is navigating the car ride home. I really like to share about my own experiences. And for me, when I was young, I can't tell you what age I was when I remember those car rides home after a tough game. I'm going to say probably 11 or 12. I always, I always had a lot of passion in my my sporting efforts, whether it was hockey, baseball, any sport I played. I always tried the best I could, so I was disappointed when I didn't do well. And what I remember is, I remember feeling sad, angry, and I and I didn't really want to talk about the game. And I think these are common emotions for children. I've heard from other parents that they experience the same thing. 
And one thing I always recommend is I recommend you asking your child, hey, do you want to talk about the game? And if they don't, you have to respect that. It's very, very important that if you don't and you just you start talking about the game and they don't want to talk about it, they may not be able to verbalize that to you. And you just you might create some stress there, some uncomfortableness for them, some anger. And we don't want that. So, again, if they don't want to talk about the game, I highly recommend use a 24 hour rule. You wait, wait till the next day to talk about the game because typically moods have refreshed, moods have stabilized. Kind of look at it like an argument with a spouse. Like if you're angry, hungry, lonely, tired, then it's probably not a good time to have a tough conversation. And I look at these car rides home as the exact same thing. So again, 24 hour rule, I highly recommend. If your child does not want to talk about the game, I would ask them, hey, what could make this car ride home more fun? Is there some music you want to listen to? Is there a podcast that we enjoy listening together? Maybe they just want to watch or play games on their phone. I'm not sure if you allow that or not. But again, empowering the car ride to just be a normal car ride home. Not overthinking it. Be a normal kid. Enjoy the ride home. We'll be home soon. No big deal. If your child does want to talk about the game, I would challenge you as a parent to let them lead that conversation. Be like, okay, which part of the game do you want to talk about? And kind of see where they lead you. Maybe they'll talk about the goals against. Maybe they'll talk about something they did really well. But that's a very important piece right there. Is typically as human beings through psychology and science, it's, it's been proven that we're wired to think negatively. We're wired to really focus on those negative thoughts because we're wired to react to threats. So typically kids or even pro goaltenders, OHL goaltenders, even the goalies I work with in the OHL is... They think about the negatives, and that's all they talk about after a game. Oh, I could have done this better. I should have done this on this goal. What I don't hear a lot is, like, things they did really well. I could have a game where our OHL goalie, who plays in a really good league and is a really good goalie, they let in seven or eight goals, which in that league, it's not very good. It's not fun. It's miserable. No one's in a good mood, and there's a lot of pressure to win. So when I do video with those goalies, I'll show them, here's your whole game. Okay, here's the goal against. We have those, no problem. We can work with that. But what you actually tend to see is all the other things they did outside of the goals against were really good, really positive. And I always look at it like, look at the foundation of your game. Your angles were good. Your depth was good. Okay, your body language was great. You didn't look upset or angry or sad. So when you look at goals against, sure, we could have cleaned up two or three mistakes there or here. But look at all these other things you did really well. So again, when we're talking about the game with your child, I would try to get them to lead it, but ask them, like, what did you do really well? Or bring up a save they made. Say, hey, remember that really big save you made at the beginning of the second period? Like, walk me through that. Like, how did it feel? Why don't you replay it to me? Tell me how it went in your head. Describe the play. When you're asking them those types of questions and making them kind of go back and reiterate what happened, and it's a positive experience, Now we're deflecting from the negatives, knowing that they've dealt with the goals against already, and now getting them to focus on the positives. So this is kind of really valuable for sports, but it's also really valuable for life. I know for me at 31 years old, if all I do is think about negative stuff, I'm probably not in a great mood. I'm irritable. I'm not happy. I socialize less. But for me, being a goalie coach, there's going to be ups and downs. So I have to make sure that, hey, my goalies didn't play well tonight, but We had a great week of practice. It doesn't mean the goalies are any less skilled. It doesn't mean that the world is ending. Life is going to move on. And that's another important point you can make as well to your child is, hey, like, just because you let in six tonight, does that make you a worse goalie? Have you all of a sudden lost skill? Answer is no. Like, you haven't. You haven't gotten any worse. It's just a game. You made a couple mistakes. And the crazy thing about goaltending is usually what makes a bad game turn into average is cleaning up like a couple small mistakes and what makes an average game to a good game is the exact same thing and what's even more fascinating is the nhl goalies the professional women's goalies olympic athletes they make the same mistakes they are not perfect they are human i could show you a mistake an nhl goalie makes i could show you an ohl goalie make the same mistake i could show you a minor hockey goalie make the same mistake again so making sure you're really reiterating that hey just because you made a couple more mistakes this game, does that make you any worse? No. 
Again, so we want to create these positive thinking loops, these positive thinking patterns of not just focusing on the negative. It's very beneficial that they also focus on the positive. Carey Price was known to do this, and I think it's obviously a big part of his success because how you think mentally is a big, has a big, big impact on how you perform on the ice and how you manage life as well off the ice. So that's it for managing the car at home. Again, to kind of go through it all, first of all, empower your child. Ask them, hey, do you want to talk about the game? If not, you have to respect that. Find a way to make the car ride home a little more enjoyable. Put on some music they like. Ask them what they want to listen to. Maybe you listen to a podcast together. Maybe they just want to chill. And if they do want to talk about it, don't just talk about the negatives, which would be the goals against and the mistakes. Try to empower them to talk about, hey, what did you do really well out there as well? Like, you made some saves. Like, walk me through those saves. What went through your head? You know, what did you see? Get them to really kind of replay those positives in their mind and help those positives stick. Okay, again, this is a very good time as a parent to really have a healthy, healthy environment for kids to manage their frustration and their anger and their sadness and whatever emotions they may be struggling with after a tough game. I know my dad, he had good intentions, but like I said, he harped on me. He was like, you have to be more mentally tough. You have to be more mentally tough. That's what I heard after a bad game. And to be honest, I got sick of it after a long time. I didn't want to talk about the game. I didn't want to talk about mental toughness. But he had good intentions, and most parents do. And I'm sure all of you here today have good intentions. That's why you're here. But my dad, A, didn't know how to teach me to be more mentally tough. He tried. He didn't know how to give me resources to be more mentally tough. He helped me a little bit, of course. But I think after a game, my tempers were flared. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to talk about it. And I think we could have had some more enjoyable or neutral car rides home after bad games or tough games if we kind of had this modern approach. So highly recommend this. Save this video if you need to to kind of come back and watch it. It's very, very important. And remember, kids remember these situations when they're young. They remember when they're angry or upset or going through a tough time. So as parents, this is a great opportunity to help neutralize the situation and kind of be that rock that they need versus kind of going at them to hear and talk about their mistakes. Moving on, we're going to talk about how to make the game fun and not take it too seriously. So this this may be more applicable for parents with goalies who are older and play at a higher level, such as AAA or even like OHL or Junior A. And I can directly relate to this. I have a couple of great stories about myself taking the game too seriously. The first one is how frustrated and angry I was after a bad game. I, I don't think it's bad. It shows that I care. Every sport I played, I gave it everything. So to me, frustration... And anger, it's a healthy emotion, but it's how we process it and how we deal with it. That's where it becomes healthy or unhealthy. Excuse me. And for me, when I talk about taking the game too seriously, a lot of it kind of revolves around my attitude and my preparation before games. So attitude was good, but I was always so focused. I would be the goalie that would wear my headphones and I wouldn't talk to anybody. I would just be listening to my music, doing my warm up sometimes with the team, sometimes without. And I found as I got older, that became very taxing mentally. I kind of had this notion in my head that I'm like, I have to do this big pregame warm-up to have success tonight in my game. And when I turned pro and the game became a job and I started playing more and more often, that's when I started to get stressed out about my pregame routine. Took the game too seriously. And how I combated that and I'm going to look at this two ways for you as a parent. First, I'm not going to talk about how I combated it and how I dealt with it, but I'm going to talk about patterns to look out for. So watch for isolation. Watch if your athlete is isolating themselves before a game. Are they doing stuff on their own? If they are, doesn't mean it's a red flag, but ask them, hey, do you enjoy? Like, first of all, find out what they're doing. Like, are you, are you juggling? Are you doing your warm-up? Or are you just, do you like to be alone? Find out why they're on their own and find out if they like it. If they find it to be positive, then that's fine. But I still encourage goalies and all athletes like to warm up with a teammate, a friend, or with the whole team. Just being part of the team, it's fun. Usually players are loose. They're kind of joking around a little bit. And it's a fun environment to be in. Whereas I myself, I kind of tortured myself to like have to do the same 
routine and warm up every game and coming off of 10 days of travel it was exhausting you know playing a sixth or seventh game in 10 or 11 days was a lot and some days i'm like i don't want to do my full pre-game warm-up because i'm exhausted but i do it anyway and i'd push through the fatigue whereas really i should have just been like yeah i'll do half my warm-up today no big deal i'll have my on ice warm-up and just because i warmed up less doesn't make me any less skilled okay but the major pattern to look for first is isolation make sure kids aren't isolating themselves try to keep them involved with the team if possible unless they kind of enjoy being off on their own that's the first one second one is not letting the game consume them most kids are good with this most kids once they leave the rink they go live their life obviously we have some children who just absolutely love hockey they get home every day they play road hockey they shoot pucks and that's good as well so again this is kind of why this refers more to like the higher end athletes who are kind of in the upper teens but really making sure and asking them like before a game do you feel stressed about having to do your pregame warm-up do you feel stressed about having to put your gear on a certain way because if you if they do that's when you want to take a step back and like really ask them like hey if you juggle for three less minutes before a game does that mean you're not going to make a save on the ice like have you all of a sudden forgotten how to be a goalie the obvious answer is no sometimes goalies need to hear that I remember I myself was so stuck in my head where I'm like, oh, I have to do this. I have to do my full dynamic warm up to play well. Whereas, like, no, I really could have done no warm up if I had to and played great because I'm a great goalie and I worked really hard in practice to set myself up to succeed today. So it's kind of creating those healthy thought patterns. And one thing I'll do with my older goalies who I would even say in minor hockey, but definitely in the OHL, is I'll challenge them to change up their pregame routine. Say, okay, today you can do something totally different. Do it in a different order. Change up your warm-up exercises because how you warm up will not dictate how you play. Yes, routines are a positive thing. They help us kind of get in the right mindset. But once you're an elite athlete and you do this repeatedly all the time, it's good to break up the routine and challenge yourself mentally so you can prove to yourself that, hey, I didn't do the same thing I normally do before a game, but that really doesn't change how good of a goalie I am. I can still go out, play really well, and use my skills that I've been working really hard on in practice. Okay, again, making sure the game's not too serious. Try to make sure your kid's not beating themselves up after bad games. This is very difficult to deal with, and it's kind of a case by case basis. You may want to get some professional help if it's getting out of hand. And sometimes the one thing we really want to avoid is burnout. Kids beating themselves up. Being a goalie is so difficult on a bad team. So loss after loss after loss can add up. And that's where I don't even say taking the game too seriously is the right term. But caring about the result, which are losses or wins, can be very taxing mentally. So even with my OHL guys, Wins and losses do not dictate how we feel about our game, period. How we practice dictates how we feel about our game. If we practice how we play for a game, then we should feel good. After a practice, if you worked really hard and focused on the one or two things you're supposed to focus on, and you can look back and say, hey, I tried really hard to focus on those two skills I'm working on. And I did really, I did really well working on that today. To me, we should feel really good about that. Great. I did the best I could on the ice in practice today. Okay, if you went out on the ice and you had a terrible practice, but you stuck with it mentally and you kept reminding yourself, okay, I'm not, I'm not doing great today, but I'm going to keep working on my one or two skills I want to get better at, that's still really good. Okay, if you have the same practice where you're struggling and you got away from the one or two things you wanted to work on, and you didn't pull it back in and you just kind of let it go and shut it down. That's a different conversation, but that's what we want to watch out for. The harder you work in practice, the more the more positive benefits you're going to have in your game. Because A, you're practicing how you play. B, generally when you work hard, your confidence increases because you're getting results in practice to set you up to, set you up to succeed in your games. And C, once you enter your games, knowing you worked hard in practice, you kind of have the same consistent mindset. You're like, yeah, as long as I just keep doing what I do in practice, I'm going to succeed in a game. Okay, so again, the big point is all refers to not taking the game too seriously. But the big point here 
is how do we keep a positive mindset, right? Because taking the game too seriously is one thing. Getting burnt out is another. But gaining confidence from results is a big no-no. Having to win a game to feel good about how good you are as a goalie is an absolutely mental breaker. It's no good. So I want you to challenge your athletes. Not challenge, but to me, I like to use the word challenge. But ask them after practice, like, or ask them before, even more importantly, sorry. Hey, like, is there anything you're going to focus on today? Is there one or two things you could work on? That's where my app NetMinder really comes in handy. Full videos on what you could work on in practice and learn new skills. But outside of that, empower them to tell you, hey, yeah, I'm going to work on A and B today in practice. And then after practice, ask them, hey, like, you know, did you focus on those two things you said you're going to? And if they say, yeah, they say, great. That's awesome. That's great progress. Like, you empowered yourself to do that. You chose to work on things, and that's going to help you be better. I didn't have to tell you to work on those things. You did that all on your own. So it's kind of that same conversation we have around praise versus validation, right? Try to stay away from the praise. Try more so to validate. Wow, you really took the you really took the initiative to work on those things in practice today. Good for you. That's a really positive thing. Stuff like that goes a long way, and it really helps by not being burnt out. Now, can you do all those things and still struggle with losses? Yes, and that's okay. When goalies are really struggling with that, that's when I recommend professional help. Talking to myself or talking to someone else who works with athletes is a very good idea. And moving on to our last talking point, we're going to talk about how to obtain a good goalie coach and what to look for in a goalie coach, what makes a good goalie coach, and what to expect. Now, the tough thing with this space is... Depending on where you live, sometimes goalie coaches are a dime a dozen and sometimes they're scarce. So for this example, I live in the GTA, Greater Toronto Area. There's lots of goalie coaches. You can kind of hand pick who you want to go to. And to me, it's very important you're getting the best bang for your buck. So first and foremost, my first point has pros and cons, but you want a goalie coach with at least some experience. Now, to contradict that first one is I don't believe that just because a goalie played at a high level doesn't make them a good coach. I've experienced that firsthand as an athlete working with goalie coaches who played in the NHL, goalie coaches who played in the OHL, have experienced good coaches who didn't play in the NHL but were amazing goalie coaches as well. But you want at least some experience just so it goes to speak that they actually played the position and understand it to some degree, of course. Okay, the second one, and this is one that I find very interesting, but I always recommend it, is let's say you have two options. You could pick goalie coach A, who is a very good goalie coach, has a great, rep, a great uh, sorry, I'm losing my words, goalie coach who has a great resume and comes highly recommended by someone. Then you have a goalie coach who's maybe a bit younger, less experienced, you know, they kind of, maybe they know some stuff, maybe they don't. The hard one here is goalie coach A may not have a great relationship with your child. Maybe they just don't mesh. Whereas goalie coach B, who may not be as good, has a great relationship with your child. To me, I always recommend that choosing the coach your child gets along with the most goes a long way. Typically, the good goalies may grow out of a coach at some point, and you will see that it happens more, more commonly than you think. But I don't think it's proper for kids to go to a goalie coach because they're good at what they do when the kid or child does not have a good relationship with that coach. For me, whenever I'm coaching with my athletes doing private lessons, I am always there to try to help them with skills and try to help them mentally, but I'm always trying to add an element of fun and an element of getting to know them and making goalie training more so an experience versus just coming in and doing drills. I take great pride in doing that, so I really recommend that you stick with a coach that your child really enjoys working with versus trying to find the best goalie coach. The next big one in terms of what to expect from a good goalie coach. So forewarning, not a lot of goalie coaches do this. I'm trying to help spark the goalie coaching community and getting coaches to do this more. But goalie coaches should be tracking what they're working on with your child. You should be able to say, hey, what did they work on two sessions ago? And that goalie coach should be able to answer that. I can tell you, Nine and a half out of 10 goalie coaches, I'd say maybe nine out of 10, it doesn't matter. Not a lot will be able to answer that question. Unfortunately, this is an industry where kids get brought in, goalie coaches probably make up the drills on the spot, and then you leave. Are you going to get some benefit out of that? Sure. 
you're still doing goalie drills, you're still doing something, but is there actually is there actually stuff being done in a proper order and is there some actual development happening there? That's where it gets dicey. So for me, I'd always ask the goalie coach, hey, like, what's your plan? Like, how do you see this progress happening with my my child? What are they going to work on in the future? Can you show me a plan? Can you show me what they've worked on in the past? And be prepared to for coaches to kind of make stuff up on the spot. For me, I always have a note going for each and every athlete I work with. Here's what we worked on six months ago. I could show you. Here's what we're going to work on next session. This is very, very important because to me, they're actually investing in your child. They're investing in their development and they're investing in doing things in the proper order. And again, when we talk about the NetMinder app, that's where skills are taught. Everything's in the perfect developmental order, so skills are learned at the good, at the proper pace and in the proper order. So I challenge you to really make sure you're getting your best bang for your buck from your goalie coach. It's going to really help and give your child, to me, the biggest chance to really learn, be a sponge, and become the best goalie they can. The first one is try to find a goalie coach with some experience of playing at a decent level, junior A, junior B. OHL if they can, or pro even better. Choosing the goalie coach that your child meshes with the best, that they get along with the most, having a great relationship, that's very, very important. And then C, making sure there's a development plan. Can you show me what we worked on in the past? But what are we going to work on moving forward? Yeah, I don't expect a goalie coach to say, hey, 10 sessions from now, this is what we're going to work on. But hey, yeah, next session, this is what we're going to do. Two sessions from now, this is how we're going to graduate up into these new bigger and better skills. So again, I want to prepare you. Not a lot of coaches will be great with that last part, but just having that conversation may spark something inside of them to actually help start tracking those things. And then you're going to get more bang for your buck. Okay. So those are the three biggest things I wanted to talk about today. And again, I'm going to be doing these live sessions probably once every three or four weeks. I'm always open to your feedback. Please let me know if there's something I could do better please feel free to DM me on Facebook anytime. I appreciate that you're here. I appreciate that you're trying to be the best goalie parent as possible. If you like, there is an option to tip for these videos. I don't charge anything. I don't expect tips. Anything is appreciated, though. It always helps. It goes a long way, and it helps you make more content for you as parents and for goalies as well. And that's all for today. I wish you all a very great Merry Christmas. It's December 19th. So you may be watching this now and current. You may be watching this six months from now. But have a great Christmas. Enjoy your holidays. And again, some time away from the rink is a healthy thing before I'm sure Christmas tournaments pick back up. All right. Have a great one. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.